what is good everyone we are finally back during another chapter review um i think the last one i did was when kid was fighting shank so it's been like six or seven months i couldn't help but want to do one because there was a lot of uh stuff that happened in this chapter that was really interesting that i wanted to get into detail and discuss of course the main part i wanted to get into was luffy versus kizaru which happens in the second half of the chapter but there's still a lot of good stuff in the beginning that i wanted to touch on as well so the chapter starts off with kuma climbing all the way up to marijua and then he's met by the celestial dragons and their guards and they're trying to stop him calling him the invincible slave and they notice he has a destination he's trying to go somewhere but then he just does an ursa shock and blows all of them away and causes this widespread destruction that's when he's approached by aka inu and you know this is where everybody's like he's finally out of the desk he's finally out of the office going out there and doing stuff however minimal he's out there doing hellhound and when was the last time we saw that that was like back in 2011 during their serialization of marine force so the celestial dragons are starting to berate aka inu telling him he needs to hurry up and put kuma down and they're like oh how could you let somebody like this hurt us so he tried to end him right there and he got the attack off he took off half his head but that's when kuma escapes and then he just teleports away obviously this is a tricky ability to deal with no matter how fast you are if he teleports away you can't catch up to him quick enough that's when we get the flashback of what happened when aka inu met with bonnie in the pre-time skip right after the blackbeard pirates had fled the scene so then we get a continuation of the conversation and bonnie is insisting that kuma would never let himself be used in this way as an experiment or be reborn as a weapon which really makes you wonder like did he have an ulterior motive was there something that he couldn't fill bonnie in on is he trying to save her in some way like what was his end goal in doing this especially being a revolutionary it had to be something that was well worth it because right now it's kind of hard to piece the stuff together so then we go back into the scene at the holy land and this is when the celestial dragons are upset that aka inu let kuma get away or rather he couldn't stop him they're like how could you call yourself a fleet admiral and i really enjoy this scene for a few reasons the main one being the fact that while Green Bull and Fujitora were fighting the revolutionaries, people were going off on them, pretty much calling them second-rate admirals, saying they can't see Kizaru or Kuzan letting the revolutionaries get away, especially when Akainu himself said, don't make excuses for them, when Black Horse brought up the fact that they couldn't use the full capabilities of their fruits on the Holy Land. So that's when people really started to double down, because you have Akainu saying this, so people are like, oh, you see the canon story telling you straight up, don't make excuses for them. So overall, I just thought that was silly, because, you know, as I always say, context matters. Just because the revolutionaries got away doesn't mean they're any worse as admirals. Nobody ever talks about Big Mom letting um, Jinbei and them escape. So I just think there's a really big double standard there. Now, as far as Aka Inu goes, I actually hope that in the future, like during the final war, you see how the Celestial Dragons are just going at him and just getting in his way when he's trying to do his job. Just saying all this nonsense. I feel like it would be nice if he turned into some sort of vigilante. Just because I don't think he really cares for the Celestial Dragons like that. So... I hope he commits to his duty, you know, taking care of pirates and everything, but then the Celestial Dragons piss him off and just like Garland Figurland executed one. I hope he executes one as well when they really start getting under his skin, especially because we saw him execute an innocent Marine. So if he's going to kill that guy, why shouldn't he kill a Celestial Dragon? But I guess that really depends on how committed he is to his actual duty and following the actual rules because killing that Marine was following the rules insubordination is a reasonable cause for death during the time of war so now we transition over to the scene at egghead which is a day later since the whole kuma thing happened a day before and we jump straight into the fight with luffy and kizaru and this is when kizaru talks about how luffy's really strong he sees this is really the man that took down kaido and this is luffy and snake man which makes sense you can't go fighting kizaru with bound man this is a man of of some of the fastest speed capabilities in the series if not the single fastest which i believe he is because it just makes sense he has the fruit for it so that's when kizaru wonders why is he protecting vegapunk why is a pirate like luffy coming to vegapunk's defense and then luffy wonders why is an admiral coming to kill vegapunk what possible beef could the navy and the world government have with this lowly man so that's when kizaru starts expressing that everything he's doing here is not something that he wants to do but he has a duty and despite his personal feelings despite how much it might hurt him to complete his mission he still is going to complete it he mentions how he's known vegapunk for a very long time so clearly there's an attachment there and honestly this is great because it gives you a great contrast between the admirals some of them are similar in some ways but they still have this unique identity to themselves kizaru himself follows unclear justice and now we see why there's this commitment to duty but at the same time it's not his desire to carry out the things that he's doing it just happens to be his responsibility and it's kind of similar to kuzan in the same way where he has friends that come in his way in the middle of his duty but then with kuzan it's like he's willing to let them go he 
he's willing to make exceptions. Like the fact that Saul is alive, he didn't kill him even though it was his responsibility. And he let Robin get away despite her threat to the world government because of her ability to read poneglyphs, her connection to the voice entry, all of that stuff. Now we have Kizaru going after Vegapunk who has an even deeper connection to the voice entry because of what he's learned, what he was able to uncover. So as lazy as Kizaru seems or he has seemed throughout the story, it's clear he's a lot more committed to his role than we realize. So now getting back into the fight, while Kizaru's talking about how he doesn't want to kill Vegapunk, he zooms away far past the island. He goes back miles and miles. He went back so fast, Luffy didn't even tell he was gone. He was still in the middle of his attack, still in the middle of the conversation. And then Kizaru just vanishes and then Luffy's wondering, how far did he go? Kizaru then begins to accelerate, amping up his speed to attack Luffy and send him flying away. Before Luffy even realizes what happened, he's flying through the Vega Force, tearing it apart. And that's when Kizaru himself realizes what he just destroyed. He has a flashback of when Vegapunk was telling him the Vega Force is finally finished and you see this look of excitement on his face and you can tell Kizaru was really pleased to see this as well. He's really happy to see his friend was this happy and it just adds to this mental struggle that he's going through. All these memories are coming back, all these reminders of what's going on here. In my opinion, I don't think he's going to waver. I think he's still going to power through it and complete his mission. But it really does make you wonder how does this all end and then what's the big incident at the end of the arc that shocks the world. So then after Kizaru blows Luffy away, that's when he ends up right in front of Bonnie and Frank. Then Kizaru acknowledges that he knows Bonnie from when she was younger. So the history there tells us that Kuma was probably bringing Bonnie in all the time when he was dealing with Vegapunk. And obviously Kizaru hasn't seen her through all these years because he's saying she's gotten quite a bit taller. So the last time he saw her, she was probably a little girl. That's when Bonnie and Frankie try to attack her. But then Kizaru, before they even get the chance, he zooms away and then appears right in front of Stella. And this was when they finally cracked the passcode that York has set up. So the timing couldn't be worse. So Vegapunk tries to reach out back to Frankie, asking him as the Vega Force carried the ship back to the island and how they finally cracked the code. But right as he says this, Kizaru starts speaking, telling him that the Vega Force is out of commission after what he did. And I thought this was really dope because it just shows how insane Kizaru's speed is to the point that he could just pop out of nowhere. Kind of like how fast Kuma moves when he's teleporting. He's just going at these completely imperceivable speeds. But right in the middle of Kizaru talking, that's when Luffy appears behind him in gear five and he tells him he has some nerve knocking him all the way down there because he had to cross the barrier twice and that almost killed him. He thought he was going to die from all of that. You see the look on Kizaru's face. It's like he's been waiting for this. He's been waiting for this form because of what he's heard. Maybe not what he's heard, but what he's seen from the wanted poster, because I'm not quite sure if the Gorosei actually filled him in on what gear five is. I don't think that's the case because they seem very secretive with it. It kind of felt like something they wanted to keep to themselves just like the existence of Emu. It could be the case where Kizaru knows what Luffy looks like originally, so now he's like, why is he looking different in the wanted poster? What is this form? What is this transformation that I've never seen before? Then in his head, he could probably piece it together. This is the reason he beat Kaido. This is what allowed him to reach that extra level. And the fact that Luffy is now in gear five, I think it really strongly implies or rather confirms gear five is faster than Snake Man. Significantly faster actually, because the fact is, Kizaru was fighting Snake Man and he honestly had no issue reacting to it, keeping up with the speed, even surpassing it, showing that he could go even faster. And as we all know, well, assuming you saw my last video, I believe that Kizaru is stronger than Luffy. To be stronger isn't the best way to put it because people have different definitions. They have different ways to describe strength or who is superior. But to put it simply, I think Kizaru has the advantage here. So it might be the case where Gear 5 catches up to Kizaru's speed. He's able to match him. It might be also the case that Kizaru is still too fast. So even though Luffy defeated Kaido, I still think Kizaru will be more challenging because this is a different fight. This is a fight where he will need a different style. He didn't have to deal with the speedster in the fight against Kaido. He had to deal with a lot of other things, but speed wasn't one of them. Or maybe it was one of them, but it wasn't on this level. Kizaru was in a completely different stratosphere when it comes to speed. In Kaido's case, it was getting the attack power strong enough to put him down against Kizaru, Luffy already has it. He has the attacking ability, but does he have the attacking speed? We'll have to see that. And then there's still a question of the timer on Gear Five because I still believe it's there, and I don't think that it's gonna be a very long, drawn-out fight. So we might not see Luffy struggle with that aspect of things. But this fight still might serve a purpose. It might put him completely out of his comfort zone and force him to adapt to Kizaru's speed. 
And there's a few ways I can see this happening. Number one, maybe he catches up to Kizaru's speed and then surpasses it. Maybe he adapts and strengthens his own future sight and his own reacting abilities. Or maybe he just counters it and then limits Kizaru's ability to use his own speed. Like, you see how Kizaru had to use all that extra space to maximize the areas he could travel to as well his own attacking ability, his own attack power, having it be at its peak when he launched his attack. If Luffy can box him into a confined space and not allow him to move around so fast, that could be a way where he can overcome him without necessarily surpassing him in speed. Because honestly, I do believe that it could be the case where Kizaru remains the fastest in the series until the story is over, but various counters to him can still exist, various ways to contend with him and overcome his overall speed. That is still in play. At the same time, I do believe there is a way for Oda to use hockey or the power system overall to create an opening for people to surpass him in speed. Like, we don't know for sure if Roger could move faster than Kizaru, even though Kizaru has a life route, maybe there's a way to use Conqueror's Hockey to have these imperceivable speeds that go beyond Kizaru's. Whatever the case might be, I think either option can make sense within the confines of the story without breaking any rules or anything like that. But I guess we'll see next chapter how Kizaru fares against his form. So I think when Kizaru was fighting Snake Man, I think that fight was a lot more comfortable for him. He didn't have to deal with a whole lot. But then with Gear 5, I think it's going to be a lot more even or start to get more even and then Luffy will either surpass him or still have to build up to it. But that's the end of this review and that's all my thoughts on chapter 1092. But give me your thoughts down below. Tell me how you think next chapter is going to go. Do you think Kizaru is the fastest man in the series? Do you think Luffy is even faster than him? And how do you think the egghead incident will end? Comment all your thoughts down below. But also don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for more videos just like this one.